Hey there, guys. You're watching Riot Press Productions. My name is uh, Patrick Thomas Purnell, uh, and I am the creator of a book called Ultra Star, which is now um, funding in demand on um, Indiegogo. I didn't even come with a beard before I come in. I just rolled out of bed, made a video, and this is how this is how it looks. You know. Um, I hope everyone's having a good Sunday so far. Um, I'm doing decent. I'm on my second cup of coffee, which is pretty good. We usually start the day off at about three. We got Black Sad back over here in the house. He was he was at my mom's house for a couple of days on a little vacation as we went out of town for vacation. Black Sad, he's not he's not excited about anything. He's he's old, uh, and he's he's just basically just waiting to die, which breaks my heart. But uh, you know he he looks pretty miserable. Uh, but I hope everyone's having a good Sunday. Um, I see George is in the back. I'm going to let him here in a second. I just want to say hello to some of the people that we have here in the chat. Let's see. We've got Jughead, George, of course. Skip is here. Oh, what's up, Skip? Um, Pastmaster Dan is here. Uh, Oliver from uh, 656 Comics. Um, uh, Pastmaster Dan, I think I said that already. Eric, what's up, sir? How are you doing? Um we need to talk about toys, Eric. We need to talk about some toys here in a second. Uh, Pop Culture Avenger is here. How you doing? Um, Mind is here. Johnny, was that? It just skipped for a second. Was that Johnny Rondo? Johnny Rondo's in the house. Rick is here, nice and early. Um, I, I think, I, like, I don't know, how, like, how does everyone feel about the show starting at two opposed to starting at like twelve thirty, how I, as we used to do it? I feel like it's better. I feel like like we have more people awake. People are home from church, and and I think people are more ready to do this. Um. So we're gonna talk about some things today. George is gonna be happy because I'm gonna be talking about some comic books today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some toys. Um, I'm going to be talking about some ash cans a little bit and uh, talk about some future campaigns that have recently closed and maybe some future ones that are kind of coming up. I, I put the link out to a couple of people, but I'm hoping that they're going to show up. So we have some new interesting people here this Sunday. Um, but uh, let's, let's check in with, with Sir George, King George. What's happening? What's going on? How are you doing? Good. Black Side reminds me of myself. <laughs> You're just waiting for the end? Yeah. Old and not excited about anything. <laughs> well, I mean, he's excited about food, but that's pretty much it. It's yep. like, it's like, but, but, but the thing is, he's having this intestinal problem right now where he, his intestines aren't absorbing anything. So he, he eat all day and he just is skinny as, I mean, you just pet him and he's like a skeleton, but he Aww. eats so much. So I, like, the, like I, I can go through a series of tests that would just kind of put him through hell, like doing like biopsies of his intestines, but he's like 16 years old and I'm not going to put him through that. You know, like I feel like we'll just, I'm just going to feed him a bunch and hope that we can absorb some and just kind of go that way. Because besides that, everything's good. Kidney levels are good. Like his blood work is good. Um, everything's good except for he used to be like. I mean, if you saw him in real life, he's really long. He used to look like a little panther, um, and now he's kind of just looking like a little old man. I I, I, I always I always think that that Neil uh, is it Neil Diamond? No, not Neil not Neil Diamond. Um, Neil Young, old man. Yeah, look at my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah, sing that to him in the morning. <laughs> Uh, but he's, uh, up, he's up and about a little bit behind you, walking around. He's next to your robot toy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because he's just, he's waiting for me to move. If if I if you saw me get up and move, like he just jumps because the because the cat food's over here. Oh nice. So he's just waiting for he's he's waiting for me to make some moves. Um, cat talk. Yeah, let's just talk about cats. I, I should just we'll 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 get Sheila Alien in here and we'll just have like cat talk and we'll get Shane in here and we'll just talk about different types of cats. Nice. Big cats, small cats, dumb cats, smart cats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, what is your Sunday looking like? I went for a nice walk this morning. I saw a chipmunk. Ah. That was neat. Yeah. And yeah. now just chilling, waiting for your show to start. Oh, man. Rough day. Yeah, yeah. I actually got a book that um, um, Canuck recommended from uh, Warhammer 40K, mm. The Ghost Gaunt. Uh, Gaunt's Ghost, pardon me, Omnibus from Warhammer. I've been enjoying that, so I've been reading that in my spare time, too. 
Uh, are you a fan of Warhammer? I don't know anything about it. Everyone in the chat always talks about it. And yeah, I yeah. wanted to kind of learn something about it. And they're like, well, read this book. It's a good place to start. So I started reading it. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, like I don't know anything about it too. I, I know the miniatures look pretty cool. Um, but you know, that's as far as it as far as it goes. Um I, I sent Blake the link, but Blake is having some internet problems, so or some power problems, so like we'll see if he pops in. Eric and Huffle then, says George robot toy, L L. He's really an old man. <laughs> <laughs> it is a robot toy, isn't it? I mean <laughs> What what the uh the Warhammer? No, the the toy that the cat is next to. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, no, well, that's actually that's a new version. Okay. Yeah, you have yeah. all your Johnny Phantasms back there now. I see you moved them. No, no. Well, they no, they've been there. Just that's restocked. Like the last time oh. I did a video, it was completely empty. And then um, last night, Whitney and I just um, packaged up a bunch of them, mm -hmm. and we we are about like halfway through the campaign as far as the feeling goes. Um, I, I know some people, especially a lot of the these toy people. Um, once once it gets, you know, once it's flagged that it's being fulfilled, these toy people are used to getting it right away. Um, they're not used to kind of the creators doing it on their own. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm having to write some people and just explain to them, like you know, like I said, June, like we're everyone's gonna have it by the time June's over. So um, I got my and, toy. What's that? I got my toy. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I mean, and I think I sent yours out in May. Yeah, I got it uh, like a week or two ago. I haven't spoken to you since I received it. Beautiful packaged amazingly, by the way. Oh, yeah? Congratulations. You're probably your best packaging job yet. I like that you taped the poker chip to the side. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what we're doing with people that don't have the lunchbox. If you, if you have the lunchbox, we just throw it in there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I mean, so far, like people have been very excited about it, um, sending me lots of cool pictures. And um, it's just there's toy mania going on right now in the CG community because yeah, everyone's got Johnny Phantasm and then and then everyone's it's got this guy too. Oh yeah, yeah, the Sal. I haven't got. I ordered mine with the comic, so I won't be getting it for a while. Well, I did both. I I, I ordered it with, without and then with, so I'll be getting two. I'll probably paint the the other one. I'll do some type of custom paint job. And mm -hmm. I, I I did a whole video about this last mm -hmm. night, guys. So if you're interested and, and you want to hear my thoughts on about it, um, I, I compare it to a lot of other toys, paint jobs, and just sculpts and stuff like that. Now this is just basically like a a just a really fun type of plastic statue. Uh, it's a toy in a sense of the word that like you can play with it, but it's not an action figure. I was kind of getting in that discussion with people and they were like, um, you know, well, it's, you know, it's, it's a really good action figure. I'm like, no, this, this isn't an action figure. This is just a toy or, or more or less like a really good statue, mm -hmm. but still, I mean, fantastic. I'm not taking anything away from it. Like I, I like when I was taking this out of the package, I was really impressed. And I'm not going to spend that much time on it, but I did make a video about it where I talked about it for about an hour. Mm -hmm. And and I had some cool pictures of me just comparing it to uh, modern day contemporary toys. And, you know, like I, in, in, in the the thumbnail for this video, I, I put a picture of all the toys that I compared them to. And it's like, and Johnny's in there as well. But you can't tell the difference between like the indie toys and the mainline toys. And that's, I think, something that I want everyone to take away from this is, um, you know, technology has come so far that we can do so much on our own now that we don't like need these other companies anymore. Like we can do everything ourselves. But if anyone has not got this, um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of these available on eBay as soon as um, yeah, he's done uh, fulfilling. Um, I definitely recommend picking these up because this is good and it's really heavy. That's that's the thing that's crazy about it. Like when I picked it up out of the box, I was floored about how heavy it was. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's 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 got some balls to it. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But I'm excited about that and and something else that I proclaimed on um, on uh, YouTube last night is I'm I'm gonna go get a a specific case toy case. Just for all my CG stuff, we're gonna have Salamandroid. We're gonna have Cyberfrog. We're gonna have the three Johnny Phantasms in there. Um, we have a henchman coming out. We have two new colors coming out. I'm gonna have the uh, Starlight Glass and Lunchbox in there. I'm gonna have the Johnny Phantasms glasses and Lunchbox in there. And I'm gonna make up a whole display of this like CG stuff. Um, 
from top to bottom and I, I'm going to make videos as we make it. And, and we're going to make a whole case, which is all CG stuff. That's all collectible stuff, you know? And, is and I, that, um, the henchman, is that what was in your thumbnail that was behind Johnny? Yeah. Have you shown those before? Yeah. Okay. When's that coming out? Uh, well, see, here's the thing with these. So these guys, as of right now, are made by Toy Pizza. Mm -hmm. We are going to do a version of this guy, but he has a fingerprint mask. Oh, so those aren't yours? Not, 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 not exactly. Like, so, so, so the way that this company works, and you'll recognize this with the pants, and uh, like the pants are the same pants that Johnny has. Um, we, we, we trade parts with each other. So, you know, I told them, I was like, hey, you can use my gun strap and my guns if you'll let me use the sports jacket, the tie, and then the head. I'm going to put a fingerprint over there. But for the most part, I mean, this is what, what they're going to look like. Um, so, so that's why I'm showing this around, just because this, this is basically like them. But, yeah, they like Toy Pizza was so impressed with um, Johnny Phantasm, they wanted to make a character to go along with Johnny Phantasm. So they actually made that. Um, if anyone is interested in that character, like I believe you can find him on toy pizza's website or also on Indiegogo, but he makes a, like the, those henchmen make great companions for Johnny. So if someone's looking to build a little bit of a, a Johnny diorama, uh, that'd be good. Well, the henchmen figures have fingerprint gang mass. Yes. That's the whole thing. Like instead of having the skulls, like they're going to have the fingerprints. Um, and that's when you're launching that, that campaign. Um, well, I, that that will be probably after 93. Okay. Or so. or or it might be like a part two of 93. Um, it, like e either way, like we might do it very similar to how we did 85, how we did 85, and then we stopped it, and then we did the toy, and you were able to get 85 with the toy. Mm -hmm. Um, we might do it that way. So it's gonna go along the lines of something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like we're looking to make new toys. Um, like, and then we're going to make a translucent Johnny and then we're going to make a radical color Johnny, like a nineties color Johnny. And then we're going to try to make a new, a new guy. So, so every time we do a couple of reprints of Johnny, cause we're going to make the whole rainbow of Johnny. Um, but we're going to, we're going to make a new, a new guy to go along with them. So we can kind of have a line of figures. So that's cool. Yeah. 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 When are you going to uh, launch 93? Uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, like uh, Evan is anxious, but um, I, I have to. I want to send out all the action figures first. Um, so, so, so my plan is um, when we're about three fourths of the way through the action figures, I'm going to put up the mailing list, uh -huh. and it'll be the same thing. It'll like if you sign up early, you're going to get a special poker chip, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, leave that open for about a month to two months. I'm not going to keep it open for that long um, because I'd like to kind of get, get this whole thing done over by the end of the year. Uh, but um, we're playing, we're, like we're kind of winging it. I mean, like we have stuff like it, like ready to go, you know, like we have artwork ready to go. Like the story is uh, plotted out and it's ready. Um, the story is going to be really good. I think everyone's going to be very happy with it. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, like everything is ready to go. Cool. Uh, but will you get a chicken fist? No, no chicken fist. <laughs> I, 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 uh, George, I'm curious. Are, are you interested in the Cyber Frog action figure? I'm probably one of the few people that isn't. I did sign up for the the pre launch, but uh -huh. I don't. I don't think I'm going to get a figure. I might. I don't know. He's such a good salesman. I might just end up buying one. I did get the Sal because I got the. Cyberfrog PVC, but that might just be where I end my figure buying for Cyberfrog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I like. I'm not sure if I'm in for all three, but I think I definitely want a Cyberfrog to put on my shelf with my other superheroes. I think there's four figures. I think there's a '90 Cyberfrog, a yeah, modern yeah, yeah. Cyberfrog, a Vespus, and a Heather. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if, if people realize it, but that's a heavy load to kind of be uh, be carrying there because. Um, just making that many figures, that's a lot of work. Just kind of a lot of moving parts. Um, I'm pretty sure E has a, a toy manager that kind of helps him with that stuff. But, I mean, that's brutal. I, like, thinking about it just gives me anxiety. Mm. Um, but, 
Yeah, well, I, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some fun things here. Well, first nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna what's that? It's nice. Oh, okay. I like uh, fun things. Yeah, fun things. I, I'm gonna do a little bit of show and tell, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show off what I what I picked up um, in Orlando. Like last weekend, uh, obviously I didn't do the Sunday show. I did a I did a live uh, show at the toy store at the mm -hmm. to uh, or toy Orlando. Mm -hmm. And uh, just talking about toys, and that's I bumped into Eric there uh, from the chat. Uh, he's a really tall dude, <laughs> um, and uh, that was fun. But um, so uh, I I, I want to share with some of the things that I picked up while at the toy show, but also in Orlando in general. Um, I I think you'll probably like these a lot, George. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the haunted mansion. That's a great ride. But I mean, these figures, like, I could not pass up on these figures because obviously, like, the ride is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But these guys just look super great, and they're Super Seven. Um, so again, what's what's kind of funny is the machines that made these probably made Johnny too. Just interesting, you know, just fun little stuff like that. And something that I also to make note of is is they're not punched yet. It, you see how they still have the uh, like the oh, whole yeah, puncher? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when, when you're a collector, that's kind of like one of the things that you look for. Like, if you can find non punched uh, stuff, like, um, you know, pe people love that. I mean, I like it, I, I, I might end up punching it later on, but right now I have these um, uh, in display in the hall. Like, we're trying to kind of put together a, a hall of like uh, fun um, Disney stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I have I, I ordered this Mickey Mouse that transforms into like an ice cream truck. Hmm. Yeah, um, it's actually it's on uh, it's on a, a toy site from a friend. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was pretty happy with these. It's a fun it's a fun ride. Ha, ha, have you ever been? Um, what's up, Zade? How are you doing? Have Have you ever Have you ever been to California? Uh, yes, many times. Did Did you go on to the Nightmare Before Christmas Haunted Mansion ride? I don't recall that one. I've been to the Haunted Mansion in Orlando. I don't want remember the one in Disneyland. Because because in, in in California, uh, it is um, they changed it. So instead of like just a Haunted Mansion, it's a Haunted Mansion, but it's a Nightmare for Christmas Haunted mm. Mansion. Um, so I mean, for for me, that's almost a reason to go to California. And then I realized I have to go to California to do it. <laughs> it's actually grown quite a bit. The the old saying was that disneyland would fit into disney world's parking lot but uh they have expanded it quite a bit well they had to for um for the uh the um galaxy's edge mm. you know yeah uh eddie wickler is in the house eddie i'm, I'm stoked that the toys uh, made it to you uh well that's good i'm very excited about that i love seeing that yeah there you go yeah, I, I still need to get mine. It's in demand. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be picking up mine shortly. Again, it reminds me a lot of Battle Beast, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm interested in that. So, he, you know, here's a, a few of the gems that I picked up. Um, are those reaction figures? Is that what those are? Yeah, Super Seven hmm. reaction. And you know, so as you I call them, you call them Super Seven, but most people call them reaction. Is there a no, difference? It's, well, it's a, it's the the company. Mm. Um, that's not Wildcats, is it? Oh. See the Super Seven. Oh, Super Seven, yeah, I do see it. So, so yeah, this this is Wildcats. No. Oh. So, 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 so I have a collection now. These toys are not that are not that great, but but I'm a fan of the box. Like, <laughs> like I like the it has a lot of crazy die cut stuff that happens mm -hmm. with the box that I appreciate a lot. Um, and then I also like the the Jim Lee artwork. I think is really good. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, and plus this is like five bucks, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's simple, simple pleasures. Um, but I, I already have a uh, Spartan and I have Grifter. I have Pike, who's my favorite Wildcats bad guy. And then I needed to get her because you need to gal up in the bunch. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean this, like, this looks like shit by itself. And, <laughs> but, but if you look at the display with all, cause I have, I have, um, Wildcats, I have Young Blood, and then I have McFarlane all on a wall, uh -huh. and it just it just looks cool. This looks like a fun like throwback uh, thing to old image stuff, but it's really great. And cool. you know, as always, I always forget, but um, Playmates made this. Oh, okay, 
So, you know, these are the same people that made Ninja Turtles and so forth. And, and it's it's interesting that, that they took a, a gamble on a property like this. I know it, it was a very popular comic book, and I think they did make a couple cartoons. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that you know, that's a big gamble. Um, and obviously, like, it's, you know, the, the toy line isn't around in any form today, so it probably didn't pay off. But uh, it was fun, and I, I was glad to find this. Are you going to open it? No. No, no, because 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 I got it for the packaging. That's one of the reasons why I like it is because the, huh. the the shape of the package. Because you open some and you don't open others. Do you have like a reasoning besides the packaging that you do that, or is it strictly because of the if you like the packaging, you keep it sealed? Um, I, if I like the cap, if I like the packaging, I keep it sealed. Like these guys are staying in the packaging, hmm. just because I like the haunted mansion and they all have like this glow type of thing happening to them. So those will th those will stay. Um, if I have like a display that I want to put something in. Then I will, uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll break it out. Um, let's see. Pat loves that box. My my wife's box. Is oh. that what you're referring to? I do. It's that's a true story. Uh, let's see. Eric says, um, Super Seven is the company actually a sub brand of Funko. Reaction is the line. Reaction are all inspired by the classic. Yeah, it's true. Super Seven, I, I I don't think Super Seven is the sub a brand of Funko. I mean, unless they were bought out because they didn't start that way. Uh, so I mean, that's news to me. I thought they were two different things. Um, because I like I follow a lot of Funko stuff too because my daughter collects um Five Nights at Freddy's and and there's a a lot of uh Funko stuff there. Um, let's see if, if any new people here that I I mix. Check out saying F Disney. I, you know, I, I I feel that way too, except for old school Disney. You know, I like old school Disney. You know, it's a small world, the Haunted Mansion, um, the old Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, you know, I, I, as a young lad, um, you know, I was from New Jersey, but when I was young, like we moved to Florida, and there was two things that 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 surprised us a lot when we moved from New Jersey to Florida. Mm -hmm. The first exactly. thing was the beaches were free. We we couldn't get over that. <laughs> I remember the first time we went to a beach, we were looking for the place to pay. Yeah, yeah. And we were yeah, like, we we're like, where where are we? And they're like, it's free. Like, what are you talking about? We're like, <laughs> what? Uh, and then um, the second thing that surprised me, or not surprised me, but you know, was was it was an important part was. Uh, when I was young, it was really inexpensive to get the season passes for Disney World and Epcot. Mm. Now it's, I think it, it might be like two grand for a year, but you get all the parks. Um, when we got it, it was only Epcot and Disney was around. I'm old. Um, and uh, it was like $400 a person, which you, you, you couldn't beat that. I mean, you could, you could, you, you can get your money's worth in, in a weekend. Um, but so yeah, it wasn't like, the crocodiles that surprised that surprised you? What's that? It wasn't the crocodiles that surprised you when you moved from New Jersey to Florida. <laughs> There's no crocodiles down here. Alligators, alligator. whatever. Uh, well, I mean, the first time that I saw an alligator was very interesting. I was about in second grade. Uh, I was playing GI Joes on the side of my house. Big surprise. <laughs> um, and I something happened, and a a, a figure, I think it might have been Lady J, got got thrown from the battle, and she went over to my neighbor's bushes. And I went over to the bushes, and I'm looking in there, and there's this huge lizard, you know, like this giant, this big lizard. I was like, what the hell? And I was like, Mom, you know, there's there's a big lizard in the neighbor's bushes, and they went out there, and it was this is an alligator just wow. in the bushes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was only about like three foot, and that's why, like, it didn't register that that it was a small alligator. I just saw it as a big lizard. <laughs> I'm impressed at that age. You knew it was large enough where you should get your mom instead of get your toy. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was pretty. I was pretty freaked out by it. Um, and then let's see. So, uh, I I actually bought comic books, George. Let me hear it. Uh. Mainstream comic books. I okay. mean, of course, I do. I do go and get, uh, you know, some crowdfunded stuff, and that's coming in as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm still reading my Star Blades, um, but uh, I picked this up. 
I heard very good things about that. Is that a trade or is that an individual issue? This is individual, and it's big too. Like they're doing it that big size again. Nice, because because it's it's written by Eastman and Layard. Laird, yep. Yeah. Laird and and uh, and Tom Waltz has something to do with it too. I don't mm -hmm. know what, but um, I, I was really surprised. Well, well, well first of all, um, okay, so good thing thank god my mom is here to clear things up for us because we were not going to be able to move <laughs> on after this season tickets for disney in in the year 1986 were 125 dollars. okay thank you mom that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> now i gotta watch what i say <laughs> um yeah then here's george is saying hello uh so um but so, uh, Chris Green, if he's in the audience, what's up, Chris? Is is the one who did the um, the prototypes for the Johnny Phantasm pa paint jobs, and he he came by the other day and he wants some books signed, uh, and he just asked me if I've read this, and I was like, Bobby Conroy edited this, and oh. and he was he was my editor over at DC, and I found him completely incompetent. Um, and, and, and I, and I, uh, I, I just, I couldn't stand working with him and I, and like anything that he had anything to do with, uh, I, you know, turned me off. But Chris was like, this book is really good. And, and I asked him the end because I was like, I'm not going to read it. I was like, just cause, cause, cause you don't know what, what turtle it is. Uh -huh. That's the whole thing. Um, like, like through the book. Um, it's interesting. He, he's, he's, he's basically storming the castle. I'll show you, I'm not going to do any, any type of crazy spoilers here, but he, he's basically storming this castle in, in, uh, it's like a Neo New York city. And he has, I need to find a picture because there's a, there's a good shot of it. He has down here in the bottom. He has the ghosts of the three other turtles. They kind of they talk to him. Oh wow! So, so he has a bit of dementia where he like has conversations with them. And see, and right there, like he he has his sigh in his hand, uh -huh. but he also has a bow, and he's uh -huh. got two swords, and he's got nunchucks. So 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 you don't know who he is, um, and 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 the conversations that he has with. The, uh, the conversations that he has with these turtles that aren't there, you 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 don't know you don't know who he is as well, um, and and I, I found that part intriguing because that that's something that 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 misses from from comics and I tried to put it in 1985, but you don't know. You, you, it's like one of the things that you want to always keep on asking is why, you know, mm -hmm. not, 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 not what is happening or where are we? You, you, you want to know why, why is this happening? Because that moves you to the next page. I thought this was good right here. So here he's looking at all the weapons and he has all the bandanas laid out. And again, he has his black bandana on. Mm -hmm. I remember there was one very short story. It was either, I don't think it was in a turtles book. It was in like one of those other little books that came out from mirage studios and it was like a quick six page story and it was donatello he was the only one that was left and he was fighting like simulations and he was fighting you know they asked the computer to bring up the next simulation and he brought back leonardo raff and mikey and he just stopped he's like turn off simulation don't ever do that again implying that donatello was the last turtle interesting now, this, now that was probably 35 years ago was that so, Eastman and, and... Yeah, it was it was Eastman and Laird? Yeah, it was the original crew that wrote that story. Oh, okay. I, I remember it, but like I said, that was thirty something years ago. And then of course they could change their mind. So, and then I I, I got this is issue two. Um, I, is I was the series I, done. Yeah, yeah. There's issue three and issue four, but I I my my shop didn't have him yet, so um I I grabbed the issue two. Now here he has a red bandana on, but I think that's just the cover artist's uh, decision. Now. What you know? What was kind of shitty about this? And I think we talked about this uh, earlier. I'm not. I'm not doing any spoilers, Joe. Don't worry. Um, was this was one of those books that they made like 25, 30 covers for? Yeah, I, now, I now, think it was now, even more than that, actually. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I and I do appreciate that that uh, Kenneth Rocafort did one because that's the one that we should all get. I think we. I think it should just be the Eastman and then the Rocafort. That should be it. But. Um, uh, you know, there was just too many covers, and some of them were just 
I mean, here, I'll, I'll, there's pictures of them in the back. Like some of them are just so bad, and this 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 whole idea where like these these comic book stores um, pay uh, to 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 license to do a cover, I guess basically what they're doing. But here's this is all the covers that were available for this book. That's a popular thing. Remember all the covers they did for Snake Eyes for Rob Liefeld? Yeah, dumb. I don't like there that. There were seventy five of them. That's that's a, see that's an IDW that's IDW's thing that they do. But something I, I want to point out, which I really don't like, is okay. So there's this company here called One Stop Shop Comics, right? Mm -hmm. They have they have oh, I'll count them. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight covers here for their one comic book shop, and then. I don't like when they do this stuff right here where it's like there's like a naked a naked version and then there's like a slightly warmer naked version and then there's the version with the font on there. It's like three three issues of a comic book that are basically the same cover. I mean, they're really yeah. getting their money's worth. Now, I understand sometimes they'll do a black and white version and I get that sometimes. But I mean, here it's like it's done so many times. Over here, it's like same thing. It's like black and white, and then him with red. I mean, so many of these comic book stores just took advantage. Oh, there's a uh, here's Kenneth right here. Oh, that's pretty cool. The yellow one. Yeah. Um, but so many of these shops did these things where they are just reusing the covers, and I just. I mean, you, you could have cut down on half the amount of covers already if everyone just did one cover. But, I mean, I, like, this is – it's not a it's not a good tactic to kind of move merchandise, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, you know, three variants, that's fine. You know, it's like you get the artist, you get maybe a friend of an artist, and then you get, like, a, a really rare or super thing or something that's special about it. But just doing that many, it's just uh, – I, I don't like it. You Has know, there ever it, been any comics ever where you're like, I want every version of the cover ever? No. Never? I, a comic book is lucky if I want one version of the cover. <laughs> like, it takes, it, it really does take me a lot to go buy a comic book these days. And, and, and the but only. I mean, ever. I don't mean right now. I meant like, even like 10 years ago. No. There was no, nothing? No, no. No, no, no. I, I don't do that stuff. Um, you know, like, like, I, like maybe the, the closest that I ever got to buying multiples of one cover and I'm saying like buying one extra cover is, you know, battle chasers. Number one, like, I think I might have maybe two or three of those. Is that Joe Matarera? Yeah. Or like, like, like the cliffhanger stuff was the stuff that really got me jazzed. I might have a couple versions, a couple of those covers. Um, you know, like, like the cliff, like the danger girl is the only, run that i have i mean it wasn't a long run but it's the only it's one of the only runs that i have all the books of mm. um same thing with crimson same thing with battle chasers even though it never finished um but that was you know after uh image and jim lee and adam and andy Kubert going over to x-men um my my next big kick in the pants was the cliffhanger stuff and that's kind of what kind of pushed me over the edge and that's when i went to school for for that to me, everything you just listed is something I don't care about at all. <laughs> like, as yeah, much yeah, as I yeah, love well, comics, like yeah, I don't like any of those things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, but, but but I thought you loved comics. I do, but none of those titles or really those artists. Like I have every version of you know the Rocketeer. Mm -hmm. When they IDW released a four issue miniseries of that, I collected every cover variant of those because I just love Dave Stevens. Mm. Now he wasn't alive when they were out; like he had passed away. So they were doing like tribute covers or like uh -huh. other uh, artists. So they were taking some of his old work. But I did buy every one of those. Um, I I did get when when um, Red Circle Comics came back out with the the Fox. Uh, mm -hmm. I think every every issue they came out with an Alex Toth cover, and I Ooh. went and gra I, I grabbed all those. But now you're talking. Yeah, um, but uh, you know, I I didn't grab the, like the other ver like there was like a David and Mac cover, and it was mm -hmm. like. It's like I, I wish David Mack would learn a new trick. Um, so, and this is another cover and another comic, but I think you'll appreciate this. That I do appreciate. And this is this is again. It is Silent Night, nineteen eighty nine. Mm -hmm. But this is a this is a variant cover that's going to be available with the Extreme ninety three campaign. 
Nice. Uh, and this this was a this image right here was a a image that I made probably about fifteen years ago, maybe sixteen years ago. Uh, it was originally Batman. Um, and I, and I did it for a class assignment and I, I sold countless, uh, prints of this. I think even Billy Tucci bought a print of it. Um, I know, oh. I know the, I know the, the, um, what, what's it called? The, uh, uh, the comic book guys. Is that what they're called? That show comic book men. Oh, um, they, they have, uh, a, a print of the Batman version of this in, in their office. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember, I remember once at, at, at New York Comic Con um, a couple of years back, um, they were walking by and they all stopped at my booth and they were like, "This is it." They're like, "This is the cover." And I was like, "What are, what are you guys talking about?" They're like, "This this poster is in our break room." And I was like, "Oh, oh, cool." So they, they all bought one. Um, but but it, it's been a big hit and I, and and it's for me it's always been a waste that it was a batman cover because i can't do anything with it so so what i did was i i had the original pencils of it i scanned it in um i reworked it as the scarlet heart uh and now it's mine and this this original piece of artwork is going to be available um up for grabs uh in extreme 93 as well nice um but yeah, so I know everyone got the the other cover mm -hmm. um, for Scarlet Heart, but I wanted to share this just because um, I thought it came out really, really well. Yeah, the issue was great. Are, is is ninety three gonna pick up where that left off? Well, I mean, four years after. Okay, but we'll find out. What, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out what happened because you leave it on a cliffhanger. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a little bit. Of, it's a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, did you like? I was I was telling you that we were going to do a silent comic book, but I I didn't want to give it away that that it was the one that was called Silent Night because I I, I felt I, right. Yep. <laughs> because like you kept on asking me, are, are you going to do a silent uh, comic? And I was like, if they can't figure out that Silent Night is going to be a <laughs> silent comic book, then I'm just going to let them figure it out on their own. <laughs> but that but but that was something that Evan and I w wanted to do for a while. And uh, we were able to 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 put that together, pull that That's together. Pretty cool. Was he happy with how it turned out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, I like. Wait, he's seen it. He's seen it, but I don't think he's held it in his hand yet. Mm. Um, I actually have to send a um, a care package uh, to him with. Uh, well, I mean, he he's got the Johnny figures, but he doesn't have the packaging because uh, I, I sent him s some of the. Uh, some of the um uh uh, uh loose ones figure. yeah loose ones um so uh so yeah yeah um i i wanted to talk about something so recently george there's mm -hmm. been this thing happening where i kind of get a little bit of uppity on twitter recently mm -hmm. and i've seen the upset neil game in a little bit um you know Neil Gaiman, he's got two mil, he's got two point two million followers. He he is he is scrapping with me over over whether or not like 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 Cinnamon Haley is is uh um <laughs> death or not. That th that's not where I'm going with this because I'm sick of talking about it. But I will say this: there are a lot of f fucking crazy people out there. Uh, <laughs> like some of the stuff that people have wrote me about. All I was saying. And I, and this is and this isn't going to be the end of it. Mm -hmm. All I was saying was that uh, death should be a white, not Caucasian, white, lack of color, gothic girl because it's who she was based on. It's like uh, Vertigo was built on the back of that little girl, basically. You know, um, I, I think the first Sandman was a DC comic, and then th then they made Vertigo for Sandman. Um, I've I've read very little Sandman, and I, I know every issue. And, oh, okay. Well, and and I know people that have read very little issues of Sandman as well. All of them know who Death is and knows what Death looked like. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like Mickey Mouse. It's an iconic character, um, and that's the only thing I was saying. Um, and people were just like up in arms about me being like a racist or a Nazi. Someone told me to enjoy like like what's that book that like Hitler wrote? Oh yeah, Mein Kampf. 
Yeah, yeah, like they're like enjoy reading Mind Cup. I'm like, I'm like, what are you? You should tell them. I don't read. You should just tell them. <laughs> I, I just look at the pictures. That's where. That's why we're here. Well, but I mean, that... listen, the ca comic characters are always looking different in TV shows and movies. Like, if you're going to be that particular, then you should be saying like Tom Cruise should be playing Wolverine and not Hugh Jackman because Tom because Wolverine's like five foot three. Like, well, I, 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 when 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 that movie was out, I was saying Danzig should be Wolverine. And I was very. Uh, this is. This, this, this would be a good Wolverine, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this. This. But this is before the internet was booming. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's like I was just telling my girlfriend that at the time. You know. Um. I mean, when uh, you know, even with Snake Eyes in the new Snake Eyes movie, he's an Asian dude. When he's supposed to be a blonde hair, blue eyes guy, it's part of the story. There's an important part of the Snake Eyes story where, where Snake Eyes gets stuck with this clan of ninjas and they decide to teach him anyway because he's an outsider. Mm -hmm. that, that's a whole cornerstone to Snake Eyes. I don't know what they're doing with it. I mean, I'm going to go see the movie and I'm going to hold on my judgment till then. But, but you know, for the most part, he looks like Snake Eyes when he's got the equipment on. You know what I'm saying? This gal does not look like death. Now, I, I hope they don't do white face because, I mean, that's almost as bad as doing black face. You know, like, I hope they don't paint her white just so she could be gothic. But but all I was saying was Neil Gaiman has waited 25 years to make this TV show movie or whatever you want to call it. And he's going to let Netflix kind of cast this person. Now, it's like. Um, it, again, it's it's an iconic character that that fits a part. It's an archetype. It's the way she looks. There's there's people that cosplay her. There's fan art. There's a whole thing around this character. And for them just to disregard it, there is plenty other people in that comic book that could be people of color. Like it, it didn't necessarily have to be the whitest of the white girls, but they did it for a reason. Um, so, I mean, that's my whole problem with Neil Gaiman. He and I went back and forth about it for a little while. Um, did, you see, did you see how he was doing? Did you ask him how he was doing? Uh, no, I didn't ask him how oh. he was doing. You know, I don't uh, think he had anything to do with the casting, just so you know. Like, I think he had zero to do with it. Well, <laughs> like, well, 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 I mean, I know he had, he, I don't think he had zero, but I think he had very little to do with it. And, and, and that was the part that I was getting at him with, was like, you've waited years to make this, and you just let Netflix just kind of do whatever you want with this thing. And it's like, once this thing bombs, which I think it will, because I, I think people will be turned off because it's not going to be what they were expecting. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, well, I mean, everyone's going to watch the first one. It's but, on Netflix only. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like Netflix has to like I, I canceled my Netflix a while ago. Um, just because they're just there's so much SJW programming going on there that it, it just sickens me. But um, you know, I'm gonna like if He Man is good, which I don't think it will be because I think it's gonna be about Tila. Um you know, I might add it again. And the same thing goes with, with Disney Plus. Like, I canceled Disney Plus because of Gina. Now, I've heard that the president of um, Dis Disney has given an apology to Gina. <laughs> and You're right, uh, What's that? You're right. Yeah, yeah. I just I had a little uh, coffee get stuck no. here. Um, you know, but, they, but, did you watch any of the, the Swamp Thing TV show that DC put out? Yeah, uh, back in the day? No, like two or three years ago. No. It's excellent. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they, they changed some characters in it, but I, I thought it was tremendous. Yeah. I, I highly recommend you watch it. I don't have a lot of these networks. Like, I didn't have DC. I think it was DC, like, Direct or whatever it was called. I don't have Netflix, but I'll buy it on, like, DVD when it comes out. Well, I'm going to watch the Sandman when it comes out. Did they, did they change uh, Swamp Thing into, like, a Sandman? No. No, no, they okay, no so. but they changed other characters like um, Madame Xanadu. They changed her from like a young white lady to an older black lady. Of course. I, um, <laughs> and like you, like I still like the show. But, I thought it was good. I don't think it mattered. Like it was still good. They never, they never changed like a black character into a white character. Just FYI, that is what I'm talking about here. What about yeah. um? What about an Iron Man when they changed the Mandarin from an Asian person to a, a white guy? They did do that in the movie. Well, well, they kind of did a weird thing in the movie where the Mandarin was an actor and he was playing an Asian person. So yeah, but then the other guy actually was the Mandarin. I can't remember the actor's name. The guy from Memento. Guy Pierce. He then was the Mandarin. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. They do it. They do yeah, everything. Yeah. 
Yeah, they do it. I mean, I, I, like, like to be honest, um, like now that you're bringing it up, when that did happen, I, I did think that was a little lame. Mm. You know, yeah, Ben, like Ben Kingsley, he's not white. He is, um, he's Indian. What is he? Ben Kingsley is is, is British. No, he's a white guy. Well, I mean, he's British, but I mean, he's a white dude. He is. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, uh. But but he was just playing a character of a character, so uh sorry, but uh oh, ben, maybe he is. I thought he wasn't my fault. Oh uh, so yeah, he's saying he, he is Asian, so Johnny Reyna says the Swamp Thing show is pretty good. It's on Amazon. I would check it out if I was you. I really enjoyed it. It's only like ten episodes. There's a couple of cool characters in it. Jennifer Beals is in it, if you can believe that. Like I haven't seen her in so many years. I always liked her. Uh-huh. Um, the main guy that's the villain, Doctor Arcane. I really Jennifer like him. Beale? Who's that? Not Jessica Beale. Who's Jessica Beale? From Isn't uh, Jennifer Beale from Flashdance. Oh no, no, it, uh, Jessica Beale is from like Blade Three and. Oh, and... that movie's terrible. Yeah, but that girl is attractive. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh. uh yeah, uh, Ben Kingsley was Mandarin, and he was Gandhi. So you know. <laughs> He's typecast as oh, just... Kingsley's father was from India, according to Henry Bemis. There you go. All right, so I was close. Um, wait, I have you small. I don't know why I have you small. Let me fix that. That's okay. Um. So so oh oh so the thing that I was getting into was I got a lot of people upset about the Neil Gaiman thing, including including Neil Gaiman himself. I I just love when someone that has like two point three million followers and they have to like squalor with me, but just. The degenerates that came out of the woodworks were I was very surprised about just because none of them were reading what I was talking about. It, it, it's like they were they they read a quick headline and they're like, oh well, that must be it. And then you know I found a whole new group of degenerates with this <laughs> thing. <laughs> Why do you do this stuff? Why do you do this? Like well, be, <laughs> well because I it, like it bothers me. You know they just canceled Aquaman. You know, Aquaman. Did you mean they the comic book? What's that? The comic book they canceled? Yeah, the oh. the one that that what's her name was working on. Don't buy my books. Oh, you know? Kelly Sue DeConnick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They 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 canceled her Aquaman, and then they have this thing pop up. Now, my argument with this thing is. This is well okay. Well, first, well, let's let's say all the positive things first. I'll say all the positive things about this image because I don't want to be this the douche that's negative all the time. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful illustration right here. Uh, the uh, the rule of thirds is off the charts on here. Like the person that made this piece of artwork knows how to make artwork. Um, the orange works well with the teal or the blue in the sky and the teal in the water. Um, a nice pyramid. Uh, shape um, composition. You're, you know, it, it, it leads right to the right to the Aquaman logo. It's great. The fish look great. Like the rendering is good. This looks like it's digital. Uh, I'd be really impressed if this was not. Um, and I mean, this looks great. Like this looks really, really good. Okay. But so, this, okay. Uh, and and and. and and it's, it's not even about that. What about like, like apparently, uh, Aqualad, his, his, um, his sexual preferences is men. That's fine. You know, like, and I was even like, I don't think it was like that when young justice was around. I think that's something that, that they had thought to later on because they had to fill in some gaps here and there. Um, but dude, like, like people like were coming after me. Like I had something wrong with like a gay superhero. Now, FYI, North Star is one of my favorite mutant uh, superheroes. I've loved North Star for a while. I love that he's fucking catty, and I love that he's like a look. He, that, that I just I love his attitude. Like he he is just he's a great he's a great character. He's got a great design. I have North Star number one, and I rock it. And I and I you know it's it's one of my prized possessions because I got it when I was a kid. Um, so I like, dude, I had no problem with like gay dudes or gals being in comic books, but it's like, you don't have to make a lame looking comic book character or cover like this. You know, this, I, I, I brought up the analogy is this, well, well, first of all, in my post, I said, this looks re- very Femi. I mean, 
his, you know, his left, his left, left wrist is looking quite thin here. You know, um, I, I, I just think that this is very limp wristed. Um, this looks like a K-pop calendar image and not like a superhero comic book. Like we need to have Aqualad, like, I mean, and he can still be hot. He can still be like a hot black dude with like little blonde dreads. That's fine. We can do all that. But I mean, this looks very like Femi. This looks like a teenager girl love novel. Now, that might be part of the audience that they're going for. It's not going to work. It is not going to work. Like, you need to get the comic book people in comic books, and you need to get the girly novel novel people into novels. Um, I just don't think that this is that great. Um, you know, it's like, I want to have Aqualad, like, coming at me with like fish coming at me and like i want balls now uh what what are you talking about <laughs> I, want, I want balls not not in the same way that aqua lad wants balls but 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 i want balls you know what i'm saying and and it's like <laughs> like like I, I i i i said this over and over again just because a superhero dude is gay does not mean he has to be Femi. Like, this guy can be fucking tough and rough and mean, you know, and still be gay. Uh, you know, like, spoiler alert, I actually have a handful, a nice handful of gay friends, you know. They don't want dudes that look like this. They want dudes that look like Jason Momoa, you know. I like and 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 that's some of the things that these people and these people that fake that 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 fake sympathize for this type of stuff. Like a gay dude does not want a femi looking gay dude. A gay dude wants a bear because they're gay dudes and they want big buff dudes. <laughs> uh, George, I'm I'm telling you I'm telling you this from from, from experience because because I, I I know dudes that talk about stuff like this. They want big, burly dudes with with beards and tattoos and just tough and badass looking. <laughs> what, are, what are you looking at? I'm I like, showing my shirt. Yeah, good shirt. <laughs> um, but would you like this comic book? That's the question. Um, I, here, here's one I liked. It's called Sovereign Wolf by Eddie Winkler. It's really, I really, I really like it. You guys should check it out. Yeah, you yeah. Your money's worth. No, definitely, definitely, Sovereign Wolf. Everyone needs to go back that. I'm gonna be back in that uh, 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 soon. T T for 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 Patrick. I I I hope you're not meaning testosterone because I'm good. You know, I, I've you know I've got my my uh, my checkup. Uh, I'm I'm good with T. You, you can ask the missus. You, you know, you get your T checked. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't realize you could do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like once a year. I, I, I go in. I go in and and get everything checked, um, and and the T count is good. Um, and again, like I, I think that I think the, I think the misses can concur for that. I uh, you didn't ask me what I did this past weekend. Oh, well, because I'm still venting about Aqualad. Well, I got something excited I wanted to tell you about. One more thing though. Oh. Um, okay, uh, no, we'll go to you in one second. Just. I was a fan, a fan of Aqualad and and um and Young Justice, and they did him justice in that. You know, like he was very good in that. Um, this, I think, this is just too femi. This is not what comic books is about. This is like a teen novel. Um, well, we'll, we'll, like we'll have to see. Like, like we'll have to see what happens. My, like my prediction is, no one's gonna buy. Well, everyone's gonna buy the first issue, and then after that, it'll be like less and less and less, and that's just the way it's gonna be. All right, George, what do you got for me? Well, I, I emailed you. I went to a comic book show last week. Oh, hold on. Let, let, let me make. No, you... no, 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 no. It's. Oh funny. yeah, you're getting big for this, George. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, what do you got? I went to a comic book show. It was the same show I was supposed to meet you at last year. Garden oh, that's State right. Comic Fest. Is that in Morristown? No, they moved it this year. It was in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, that's where I was born. You're kidding. Yeah. So there was a mall up there, um, the Mills uh, in Jersey Gardens. Mills. So, yeah, the Mills at Jersey Gardens. Oh, the Mills. A, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So a couple of the stores had closed down. So there was a huge anchor store that was gone. So they hosted the show in the anchor store, which is now empty. That's cool. So it was a lot of fun, but I got to meet Billy Tucci. Ah, 
So I had my Vampirella book, uh -huh. and I brought him to sign it, and he drew me a Vampirella sketch. That was pretty cool. Isn't that nice? Absolutely. So I got Greg Hildebrandt and Billy Tucci signed in the same book. Hildebrandt, that's awesome. He, yeah, he, isn't that cool? I, I believe he's teaching at the Cuber School now. I, um, think, I think you're right. Um, uh, how is Billy doing good? He is, every time I see him, he's just so happy, so yeah. nice, like so personable to everybody. Uh, signed all my stuff. He was collecting money for the veterans. Like he gets a little donation bucket. Just always had a line. It was a lot of fun. It was a great uh -huh. show. Cooper School was there, actually. Tom Mandrick was walking around. Oh, I love like, Tom Mandrick. He didn't have a booth. He was like legit walking around, like talking to people, buying back issues. It was, and it was just cool to see. Yeah, Tom, Tom Mandrake and Jan, like mm -hmm. I love those two people so mm -hmm. much. Like they were so kind to me um, when I was going to the school. Uh, like they would always come to the art store. I used to work at the art store, and Tom would always take a second and have a conversation with me. Um, Jan and I like became friends uh, because I was really I was trying to get into Star Wars at the time because John Allstrander was also teaching at the school um, and, and, and he liked what I was doing as well. So they were both trying to get me in um, with, over at dark horse. It ended up not working out. Uh, but like Jan showed me a lot of tricks and so did um, Tom and drank when it comes to inking. Um, they weren't my instructors, but, but they always took time to, to kind of show me stuff. And then whenever I would see them at a convention, like I, I would always go with drinks with them. Um, cause they were a good crew. Like, yeah. like, their, like their crew is kind of like at the conventions, it would be like, you know, Andy, um, Tom and Drake, like Jan, uh, Teresa, Kubert. It was like, it was like always like a group of people and, and they all lived in the same neighborhood too, which was kind mm -hmm. of funny. Cause it, cause I, like, I don't know if you knew this. Well, I mean, Andy moved now, but but Tom and Jan were were also uh, Andy and Teresa Kubert's neighbors. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I think they were one of the first classes. I don't know if they were the first class, but they were one of the first classes at that school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Tom Mandrake and Jan, and then also um, this this gentleman named Michael Chen, who is uh -huh. an instructor there, kind of. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, like there's actually been some interesting going ons with the school recently. I don't know if you've got any wind about it, but it's not it, the the Kuberts don't own it anymore. Um, and uh, there's this guy named uh, why well, I call him Tony Tony Marquez, uh, who 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 uh, his 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 stepfather gave him the money to buy the school. Um, so he, he, he married well and he was able to buy this school and now he owns the Joe Kubert name and it drives me fucking crazy because the dude came and put a sentence together. I mean, he's worked on three books his entire life. He never did a monthly issue and now he's like running a school. And from my knowledge and from the way that I hear him talk, he doesn't know shit about running a school, but his dad paid for the school and now he's got it. Um, and I, uh, I, I, I've been meaning to make a video about it. M Mad Dog is trying to get me not to because he thinks that I'm gonna piss some people off. Mm -hmm. But um, like the Kubert school should be in the Kubert family, and George likes comics. I do like comic books. There's a there's a nice tie between Tom Mandrake and Jander Sima because uh, I think I've told you for my favorite character is Swamp Thing. And when mm -hmm. Alan Moore was on it, it was uh, Total Ben and Bissett, and they were part of the first mm. uh, Kubert class, right? And then who would fill in for them on issues? It was Mandrake and Dersima. That's interesting. And then also, uh, who who else? Um, Kim DeMolder. Rick Veach. Was that? Rick Veach was there, too. Wasn't he at the school as well? Not when I was there. Okay. But, but, but Kim DeMolder was Kim. my figure drawing teacher, and he inked uh, Swamp Thing after uh, 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 Phil, Phil Hester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he inked over him for a while. So, yeah, there's a lot of – well, then also – and then Steve Buscema was at the Cuba School for a while too. Not Steve Buscema. Um, who, who am I thinking about? Um, John Buscema? Sal Buscema? No, 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 no. I, I got the wrong completely uh, name wrong. Uh he 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 has that 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 school up in Rhode Island for for comic book studies. Um, ah, what the fuck is his name? He, he worked on Swamp Thing for a while. I mean, he's older. He's like sixty five. He might be seventy. Um, Ron Randall? No. Worked on Swamp Thing. I heard that. Was that one of your cats? Yeah, I I have a bunch of boxes. <laughs> Mister Pink, that's Steve Buscemi. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean. I, I always say Steve Buscemi. I meant Sal. Uh, uh, Rick no. Veach. What's that? Rick Veach. No, no. Damn it. Oh, but that. I said Stephen Bissett earlier. Stephen oh, you did? And, and John Totalbin. That's what I oh, said earlier. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, he was there as well. Now, now he's got his own school that's up in... Uh... Yeah, and Veach works for him. Oh, okay. Well, it, it's interesting because when I was an instructor over at Ringling, um, they, like, they were always trying to get like workshops together. And I put together this big proposal for... Um, for Ringling, which is Ringling is a huge school. I, I'm not sure if anyone knows this, but it's a ginormous school like like Pixar, DreamWorks, Sony. They all go there first. That's the first place they go when they're hiring. Barnum and people. Bailey. What's that? Barnum and Bailey. <laughs> not, <laughs> not so much anymore, but at one time, yes. Um, but uh, 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 I was trying to set up a workshop between the Kubert School and um, Ringling um, and Tony. Tony Marquez or Tony Bag of Donuts, um, he, like he was the guy that I was in charge with with talking to about giving this proposal to. I worked on this proposal for like six, seven months, gave it to him, didn't hear anything back, blah, blah, blah. I talked to Adam like a year later and he's like, we never even saw it. Like, and, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like Anthony Marquez is because I think he's a stupid fuck and he's, he's, he's out to glorify himself. Um, and, now his school is not doing well, and uh, it makes me sad. Uh, but hopefully, we can get it out of his hands and maybe get back into some Cuba hands again. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I had to talk about. I mean, I, I like before I go online, I have all these things that I want to chat about. Oh, okay. Well, this is something that we'll talk about. Well, mm. let's, let's let's talk about some more comic book stuff. Mm? Are you against that? No. What What do you got? Well, I mean, it's old news, but I want to do a plug for it just because we're getting so close. Um, we are very close. We are about one oh. backer away from $34,000. Um, so, I mean, things are going really good with the Ultra Star campaign. Um, we are going to be taking the T-shirts and the glasses down soon. Oh, okay. So Eric's asking right now. Um, my, my, my goal, like, I'd like to – I was trying to do it by the end of the weekend, but we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing some more uh, um, streaming tonight, but I'd like to get to 500 backers by the end of today. Uh, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try to jump around and, and do some promoting, um, but I'd like to get to 500 backers. But more easily, I mean, we're we're one backer away from thirty four thousand um, dollars. And as I was just uh, talking, like we like like we're gonna be taking down um, the shirts. Oh, let me get a good picture of the shirts real quick. Um, we're going to be getting rid of the shirts, the hats, and the glasses soon because I want to order those and I want to ship those out to people before they get the book. So, you know, if if you're jonesing for some Ultra Star merchandise, um, get a get a shirt, get a hat, get a glass, and you will be getting those probably within I would say within a month or so. Nice. Uh, uh, someone said Ron Raylan. Is Ron Raylan in the house? If 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 Ron's hanging around, what's up? Um, but yeah, yeah. So, so like, we're going to be getting this merchandise out to people very soon. Cause I want, I want it. Cause people like getting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and I think, you know, when, when you're doing a campaign and I think there's some campaigns out there that could learn from this. If you're doing a campaign that's long, have little things that you can send out to people to kind of let them know that you're doing things, you know what I'm saying? Um, don't, don't just leave your customers in limbo, send them, send them something, you know, like let them know that, 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 that things are being done. Um, sometimes when these campaigns are in limbo for two years and you don't see any work and there's nothing coming out, it's, it gets a little discouraging. Um, our, our next shirt that we're working on right now, and I think everyone's going to be a big fan of it. It's going to say riot, riot press coffee is for closers. <laughs> Um, and that's going to be a shirt that we're going to be pushing after this because uh, what does that mean? That means you don't get a cup of coffee until you've done your fucking job. Um, and 
if there's one thing I think we're good at doing over here at Riot Press, when I say that, I mean me and Whitney, <laughs> is we get to work and we get stuff done. You know what I'm saying? Like, she and I will sit here and just put packages together one after another, and we get a routine going. I don't know if you've seen some of the pictures, but, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing, uh, you know, S SUVs full of, of, of packaging full going to the, uh, um, the, the post office. And those lunch boxes are big, so, I, you know, I, I can only make so many trips. But the shirts are going to be coming down soon. Um, if, if anyone's you, you put the packages in a lunch in a in a mailbox, or did I misunderstand what you were just saying? Oh, the lunch boxes are big. The lunch boxes are big, and those go inside of a box. Oh, then you can only fit so many in your car when you yes. go to the post office. Okay. Do you actually get in line and like wait with everybody else, or do you drop them off in like a loading dock like EVS? No, no, they, they 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 know me now. So I, I like like when I walk in, they 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 have this big cart. And they just give me the cart, and I go out and I put all my stuff in the cart, and then I bring it in. So oh, yeah, they, nice. Yeah, yeah. So 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 they're they're you know uh, well aware of of me already, and they're always like like what are you shipping? Um, <laughs> but but so again, the 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 shirts, the glass, and the hats are coming down now. One of the reasons why we're deciding on this is again, we want people to get some merchandise and merchandise and merchandise. And but um, I'm ordering the glasses for the 1985 action figure campaign, so I want to order the glasses for Ultra Star at the same time because it's going to be cheaper for shipping. So I'm just going to do that. Um, there is a little bit of an update on is there a better picture of the hat? Um, there is a little bit of an update on the hat, so um. In in my YouTube, uh, I do a tour of a of a uh, a toy store called Echo Base, and they are also Rebel Prince, who makes my stickers and a bunch of other stuff for me as well. Well, next door to them is where Echo gets all their hats and their shirts and all their other stuff made. Um, so I walked over and was able to check out some of their hats. The Ultra Star hat, um, it it the, the structure looks like this, but it's different. It's like 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 it's a it's a it's a black camouflage hat. Um, now, what I mean by black camouflage is there's black, and then there's like a slightly lesser black, and it's like it makes like a black camouflage. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Um, and and then the 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 mesh part is black as well. Did so, you ever so see um what's that movie the with the the guys in the the imaginary band the fake band with Rob Reiner? You know what I'm talking about? No. You know what I'm talking about the movie with the Christopher Guest and the <laughs> you don't know. Mm -mm. When they're talking about black, all right, never mind. Go ahead, finish what you're doing. Black and slightly less black. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I I think I'm familiar with that joke. I, I think I've seen I've I've seen Final memes. Tap. Thank you, Henry Bemis. Spinal Tap, of Usher course. Jerry got it first. Yes. If you would have said Spinal Tap, yes, I know what you're talking about. I couldn't think of it. I was thinking Rob Reiner, the band. I thought you would know. No, no, no. It, you like, have a super chat, by the way, from Old Dirty. Oh, okay, let me go check it. Check that out real quick. Old Dirty Fatty. Hey, Pat. If you're going to have a QB alumni show, I would like to be included in this. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we're friends. I think we're friends on the uh, on the Twitter. If not, add me on there, and and, we'll, and you know, we'll talk about it. I'm not sure if we're going to have a, an official type of clash reunion type of deal, but um, I mean, that might be fun. Um, Shane and I would like to do a, a show where we just talk about Erwin Hazen the entire time um, because Erwin Hazen, um, if you're not familiar with him, he's a gold, a golden age comic book artist. He created wildcat. He created the Fox. Um, he, 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 he he taught a 14 year old Alex Toth, like how to draw um and he's he's one of those like cornerstones in the industry that no one talks about um he lived in a little tiny brownstone in in new york since like the 40s or the 30s i think it, he, he was rent controlled so i think he was paying like a hundred dollars a month until he died um and he was older than joe kubert at the school so at the school joe would call everyone kiddo what's up kiddo how's it going kiddo hey kiddo Erwin Hazen would call Joe Kiddo. It was the funniest thing that I was because it was like it's like it's like a hundred year old calling like a nine year old kiddo. It was it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Uh, but we but we you know if we do have an alumni show, um, you'll see us promote it. Um, write me on Twitter and we'll talk about it for sure. Thanks for the super chat again. 
we are taking super chats and the super chats help everything uh going because i'm not really monetized in a sense that my videos aren't really monetized uh you know just because i swear a lot and then i i play a lot of copywritten music so i i can't get stuff uh monetized um so the only way that i, I kind of keep the lights on is the super chat so people that give the super chats you know i love you guys and i appreciate it so much we, we have a question in the chat i think we've clarified it though but can you just uh, go over ultra level zero for us because some people are talking about the shipping costs to other countries oh gotcha just, okay just mention that real fast if you don't mind yeah yeah so so just again um, the shirts and the hats and the glasses are going to be coming down soon. So if you're interested, uh, jump on now. Uh, again, um, you know, if you backed us already and you don't have a hat or anything like that, uh, please do because we're, we're $15 away from $34,000. Uh, that would make Mrs. Parnell very happy. Like, like when she got home from work and that's, that's good for me. If you know what I'm saying. Um, uh, let's see. So th this is the one in, in question, the uh -huh. zero. Okay, so uh, I, I I forget the details of it, but the book is twenty five. Maybe it says it up here. We'll do we'll do it this way. Uh, the book is twenty five, um, and then the shipping uh, is is cheaper. Now the thing about it is. The shipping is cheaper because the package is lighter. You're you're not going to have the poker chip. You're not going to have the extra cards. You're not going to have you know. Once we get the Kenneth poster in there, which I think we have, we got the Kenneth poster yet. I think we we're, we're about to. Uh, we're, we're getting close. That's to that. forty thousand. Oh, okay, okay. So what what was the last thing that we got that was that was new? The card. The card. The 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 foil card. That's right. Uh -huh. So so it, in theory. You won't get you won't get all the extras, and and the shipping cost is much less because again the 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 cost is less um, for shipping it overseas. Now, for for you guys that don't know, you know, shipping something that's like over eight ounces to Japan or Australia or New Zealand or the Middle East or even England, it gets pretty it, it's pretty expensive. I mean, I, I I would think like our average package that we were sending out to um, Australia uh, for Johnny Fantasy in 1985 was coming out to about thirty dollars a package, and there is a lot of people that are upset that the shipping costs more than the book. So we fixed that with this. Um, normally, the shipping for a book would be around twenty five to thirty dollars. I think we have the shipping for fifteen dollars on this, which is we might actually be losing a little bit. But I wanted to get this book and the people in the hands because I know a lot of people in Australia were, were kind of upset at how much it cost. So you can get this book um, for a reduced price. Now the way that we have it set up in the back, because um, you can't necessarily see it right here, but we have something called all the fixins. Now, if you're a fan, oh, and just real quick. Um, in the United States, you can also get this book, and it also has a reduced shipping as well. So the book would be twenty five. The shipping is five. Again, you don't get any of the extra stuff. You just get just the book, nothing else. Um, now, uh, on 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 the way out, if you if you like this perk and you're like, you know what, I don't care about paying for all the extra stuff. I want all this extra stuff anyway. You can add all the fixings on the way out. Now. Um, it, it like all the fixings are more expensive for people in, in Australia, and you know it's a little bit cheaper for the people um, in, in in the United States listed. Just because I had to kind of adjust the shipping, um, in, 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 I had to kind of like eyeball the shipping in Indiegogo. So the pricing is a little bit weird, but it, you know if you're overseas and you just want to get on board with Old Star and you want to give it a, a whirl, you know without having to spend like fifty dollars for a comic book. Um, you know, the ultra level zero is for you. And again, if you like the Japanese cover and you just want all the fixings too, you just hit that button and it will add the appropriate amount. I already figured it out. It'll, it'll cost as much as, as you would, like if you were just going to buy just, uh, like the regular Kenneth cover. Um, so, uh, hopefully that clarifies things. Th did that make any sense the way that I explained that George? Yes. By okay. the ultra level zero, it's cheaper international shipping. Yes. 
Well, and it's cheaper th- domestic cheaping too, uh, th- domestic as well, because yeah. I don't I don't want to I don't want to fuck anyone over with that, you know. So oh. it's like normal shipping for us would be ten dollars in the U.S. Um, for this, it's only five. But again, you don't get all the extra stuff. Keeping that, keeping that, uh, keeping that um, price down. I like burgers too, George. Mm-hmm. Uh, b- burgers are by far my favorite food to eat. More than pizza. More infinitely more than pizza. Whoa, no, I'm still I'm pizza number one. Like 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 pizza. Like I get really bad acid reflux from from pizza. Oh, uh, but but like like burgers. Like I am a burger connoisseur. It's like like whenever we go to a place, like I, I always like to see the type of burger they have. Mm-hmm. Um, like my wife is a pho connoisseur. That's her thing. Is like pho and like uh, Vietnamese food. I like it. You know. But but my thing is burgers. Like uh, burgers are my gem. Got another super chat. Check it out. Will we get tracking notification for action figure? Uh, yeah, yeah, you should. Um, depending on yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone does. I mean, it it, it might come. It, uh, you, there's two options because because we're shipping things out two ways. We're we're doing it through PayPal and the post office. You'll get it sh- directly through Indiegogo. Or you might get a notification from pirate ship, and that's another way. That's the other way. The uh, other way that we ship. So, um, it, once your package is in the mail, uh, it, 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 you 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 will be notified. And we are about halfway through um, the Johnny Phantasm action figure campaign right now. I think we had three hundred and fifty three uh, backers. Again, I love every one of you, um, and we're about halfway through that right now. So, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's slow from like, like the people that, that ordered toys that are just toy people, it's slow from their point of view. But, um, as far as comics gate goes and all this stuff goes, um, you know, I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, you know, I, like as long as, as long as everyone has it by June, um, I feel like I, I fulfill my obligation and my promise that everyone would have it by June. Mm. Um, you, now I saw that you uh, sold that one splash page that you had up for the past couple of weeks. Are you gonna add more more pages? You read my mind, George. Mm. So 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 there's been some type of confusion about the about the adding on the pages at the end. So I even took the image down there that promoted it. Now, if you guys want a page and and you just want me to pick it out, um, there's an add on, and it's 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 a little bit cheaper than than like let's say just buying like a regular page right here for two twenty five. Um, I think it was around maybe one seventy five, and and I got to pick the page. Now, I it, like I stand by my uh, my artwork. There's no shitty pages in here, um, and I and I do this in Johnny Phantasm and everything. I try to make I try to make every piece of art. Or every page looks like a piece of art. Um, sometimes, and I've seen a lot of my friends do this uh, in, in the comic world. They kind of just shit pages out. Sometimes, you know, it's like they got a deadline. They'll have a couple good pages, and then there's like a couple shitty pages. There are no shitty pages in Johnny Phantasm or Ultra Star anywhere. They're all great pages. They're all great. Like all of them have like a main character on them. There's, there's all, there's always something happening, but we are going to be adding uh, next week. I'm going to be, I'm uh, next Sunday, so you know, a week from today, um, we're going to be having a new art drop. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be putting up probably about five new pages. They're, they're, uh, they're going to be two twenty five, and uh, I'm going to have them specifically here on the side, so, so, so people can know exactly, you know, what they're getting. Um, so, so that's going to be happening. Um, probably by then the t-shirts and the hats will be down. So again, if you want the hats, if you want a shirt, if you want a glass, get it by next weekend. Um, but yeah, we're going to be putting up new pages. And then also, I, uh, a couple more things that are kind of exciting is, uh, Matt Yaki, uh, has finished a clump of new pages. Oh. Um, so we're, we're going to be putting up some new pages um he's killing it like we're working really well as a team as far as i'll I'll bring up one of his pages while we talk about it um as far as like just rocking like a good superhero color scheme like he and i are working really well together right now um and uh act two i I posted a picture of it 
um, act two was almost is done. You know, like I, I break my stories up into three acts. Um, act one is drawn in the computer. I have to print it out so I can ink it. Same thing with act three. Act three is drawn. I have to print it out so I can ink it. Act two, I actually drew by hand. Um, so I just, you just inked it straight up. Uh, but act two is all the artwork on my, from me is done. All the black and white artwork is done for act two. I think, I think it's about 25 pages. Um, and I did that. I, I, I start, well, so I drew these, obviously I told everyone that I drew these pages a while back, but you know, I've inked all those pages just since this campaign has been going. So so uh, acts, acts one and three are only like eight pages each then? Uh, no, well, I, I'm planning on doing 50. Oh, you but, said 40 in the campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 50 is a stretch goal, and I'm going for the 50. Okay, so you're just uh, – all right, cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I – I, you know, I was talking with the wife and just looking at what, uh, what my other campaigns uh, have done and also comparing it to current campaigns that are running, not mine, but other ones. And we have to do 50 on this. Like, that's like a must for us to do. You so put that I, in an update. Let everyone know. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm not trying to be funny. Like, let folks know that. If that's what you're doing, let them know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, like, I mean, I, I'm not gonna. If we get to 45, I'm not gonna like refund everyone their money back. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, like, like, I want to do 50 pages, you know, um, like, because those those 10 pages, those 10 pages are a nice big chunk about Ultra Girl that I want to put in there because um, she's a she's a really important part of the story. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, that's the plan. Um, you know, what's what's the binding? Perfect or staple bound? We're doing staple. And now okay. the reason why, or saddle stitch, um, the reason why we're doing that is because I'm making comic books. I'm not, I, you know, I, I will do collected versions at the end of these, huh? but but I'm making comic books right now. I'm not doing little trades. Um, I know the little trades are very popular and people like them. Um, but uh, I have, again, like, you know, before this, I was a illustrator of Wizards of the Coast, New York Times. Um, you know, I did a lot of, uh, uh, different illustration type of work besides comic book work. I want to make comic books right now. I don't want to make little trades. Um, I like comic books. Yeah, yeah. I like. I know. I've heard. I've heard. Um, but but yeah. My my. And I know Jasper is going to be upset about that. Um, and I've I've come to terms with that. Um, but I want to make comic books. You know, like Shane, Fraga, Ethan. Everyone's got has had a chance to make comic books. You know, and and I haven't. You know, so I, I really want to uh, um, make make comic books and then collect those into a trade. I mean, the Johnny Phantasm trade is going to be a beefy SOB, and it's going to be a very exciting time once we get done with that. Um, and I'm hoping for the same thing with Ultra Star Two, um, oh, Ultra Star as well. I mean, uh, not two. Um, but two, I mean, I've already roughed out the 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 plot for two, and I, I have a rough idea of what's happening in three. Um, so unlike J.J. Abrams, I do plan ahead a little bit. Um, uh, what about the two ash cans? Are you doing all the work yourself, including the coloring? Uh, I believe so. Now, oh. I, I I have a friend of mine who is a really good illustrator. I'll bring up I'll bring up some of those th those those pieces that you're referring to. Um, uh, so I am radioactive. Th this is already drawn. I already have this. This is ready to go. This is good to go. This is done. Um, the general star. I, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I, I have an idea of what I want to do with this, but I haven't fleshed it out yet. Um, I might hire someone to kind of like help me uh, tighten up my pencils, and then I'll go over there and ink them. So that's kind of something that we did in um, 1985. Was because again, like we were a little bit late in 1985. I would rough out the pages. I would give it to my friend Jay, who is credited in the book. He would tighten them up, and then I would tighten those up even more, and then we would send it to an inker. Um, there might be a situation that happens like that with the Ashkins, just just for time. Um, but time wise, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty confident because you know I'm already done with one third of the book, um, and the other, you know, the first and sec or third half of the book is basically done i just have to print them out and start inking them and then give them the mat so you know i think scheduling wise like we're really good now my you know my plan is and i was talking about this with michael bancroft because he was kind of surprised um you know it's been 
I think since we launched Johnny Fantasm in 1977, the three issues, I mean, we put out, I, I, you know, I count those as three books, you know, so we've put out those books. We've put out Johnny 1985. We put out Silent Heart and we've put out the action figure all within about a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to try to keep that going this year as well. Like I really want to kind of kick ass at this. Um, cause I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that are just doing these campaigns and they kind of sit on them for a while and not much happens. Um, I'm a man of action and I, I like getting these books out there and I like, I like building an audience. Um, I, again, like I, I wasn't like a famous comic book artist, so I couldn't come in here and just expecting all this stuff to happen. I had to kind of like have trial by fire a little bit. So what I'm doing these couple of years is I'm just trying to give you guys um, as much as I can. Um, but more importantly, you know, some of my best work. Uh, and, you know, like I think 1985 is some of my best work, especially writing wise. Um, and you know, the Johnny action figure stuff, uh, obviously I didn't make everything, but you know, as far as my heart is concerned, like my heart is in that. And mm -hmm. then uh, ultra star, I mean, ultra star has been my baby. You know, this is something that I was working on with Joe Kubert at, at the Joe Kubert school in 2004. Um, so this means a lot to me. Um, so, you know, this, all, all these things that I'm doing are going to be really good in the next couple of years. And like, what I would like to do is every year do a Johnny book, then do a general or a ultra star book, then do a Johnny book, then do an ultra star book. I like to kind of go back and forth for a couple of years. And then I have some ideas after that, but I'm not going to get into any of that because I, you know, I want to concentrate on what we're working on right now, but we do have a lot planned for riot press. Um, and, uh, I think like our fan base is growing. And I think one of the reasons why we do that is because, um, we produce stuff, you know, and we get it to people. Um, did you, um, did you watch, I know you were in the chat a little bit. Did you get a chance to listen to Leroy show at all yesterday? Uh, I, yeah. Well, like Winnie and I were, were actually at the Tiki bar and we were watching for a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> we were, we did mid-year mid-year nominations for uh you know our, our awards that we did last year and and and, and i appreciate you nom uh, uh, nominating me as, that... as, the, as the creator but what's up with everyone ignoring that um i i, I who ignored it <laughs> it was like you said it and everyone has ignored it <laughs> oh no no i meant that i mean you put out 85 already you put out the action figure already now things might change between now and november if ethan puts out Red planet and warts and all but as of right now, through June, which is what the discussion was, that you were my my nomination for that for what you've done so far. I appreciate that, yeah. and I and I and I appreciate that someone uh, is taking notice of the hard work because this does take a lot of work, you know. Um, and uh, I, you know, I think that we will. I mean, I don't I don't know where Wreck Planet is right now. I'm looking forward to it, but I think Ultra Star will be out before Wreck Planet will be. Um, so, I mean, I mean, so that's a lot of books in one year. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that, 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 that I have to get creator of the year. Um, just, just, just you saying it alone, George is enough for me. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I wow. mean, I, I, I always tell Whitney, like, like, like when we're putting, uh, your package together, I'm like, don't <laughs> fuck this up. Don't do this. I'm like, this this will financially ruin us, you know. <laughs> one one bad review from George, and it's all over. Um, so again, just just real uh, real quick. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna beat this drum all day, but the shirts, the glasses, and the hats are coming down soon. Um, if anyone wants to help us out and get us over uh, to to that thirty four thousand dollar mark, that'd be great. Um, I mean, if you're thinking about getting a hat anyway, you know why not do it now? The glasses are sharp. Um, and these shirts, these shirts are going to be showstoppers. Like people are going to be wearing these at conventions and they're so iconic looking. You're going to see these shirts like a mile away. That's awesome. And I saw you, you sold the art for that too. So yeah, yeah. I was very happy about that. Nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I do, man. I, I I put the gloves on when I'm putting it together. You know, it's like no fingerprints. I, the cats have to get out, out of the way. Did you see Blake did an unboxing of his toy? Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, he did an unboxing. I have to go check that out. He also did an unboxing of a book I sent him. 
which was just like a personal thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, there's there's something. <laughs> Is Vanessa name shots fired because I, yeah. I, I, what, why? Because I said it was going to be out before. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not shots fired. I just, I know where I am in my book. I, you know, I'm not sure. Like, like Ethan gets his books printed in China, and that takes a while to come over in a boat and all that stuff. I get, but like the turnaround on my book is four days because they're right down the street from me. Um, you, do you go to the same place as Professor Murph? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I go to. I, I mean, I told you this before. I, I go to the same people that 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 did that eerie stuff. Like, yeah, but I seven, wasn't. That I do know, but I don't know if it's the same as Professor Murph's because his, 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 his says his is in Florida too. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. So something happened that I'm not sure exactly what um, uh, Ben Henderson told me about this. If you, I'm not sure if you remember him, but but uh, um, a couple years ago there was a, there was a giant grant that was passed that um, helped all the newspaper companies upgrade their their printing. So so for some reason in Florida. All the the web press offset press uh, printing is all it's like state of the art right now in Florida. So you you it's like we went to this one area where my um, uh, uh, book manufacturer is, and it's like there's a bunch of book manufacturers just in that area. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's crazy. So it's like, like, we have a lot to choose from. And I think, you know, I think professor Murph is up in Jacksonville. So, I mean, I, I, I know up in Jacksonville, they have a lot of web press up there. So, um, I'm sure he's got a good deal, but I mean, our deal is really good. Um, we don't have to pay for shipping cause I can go pick it up. And also I like going and hanging out with, with the people that make the books, mm. you know, Ben, you got, a, you got a question <laughs> in the chat from the, con- I like that. Good, good one. Question uh, from the Canuck: Did both of the lunch boxes ship, or just one? Uh, just one. Yeah, I, I'm I'm handling them as as, as the box uh, as they're laid out, and uh, like this is another thing that's funny. It's like our house. There's boxes everywhere, and it's been that way forever. That's why I haven't ordered the glasses yet because that just means more boxes. But right now, um, uh, we have like so many big boxes like in our in our bedroom, and the gold lunch boxes are right by our bed. So I'm trying to go through all those first. But we're we will be shipping the black lunch boxes very soon because um, like we're actually down to the last few gold ones going out right now. So the gold ones, which are not the golden ones, the golden ones are the black. Ones. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have done it like that, right? <laughs> I should have put the Michael Golden ones on the gold lunch box. It would have made everything uh, a lot more easier. Uh, but um, a- a- anything else you 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 want to bring bring up, George? Um, I'm trying to think, uh, on splintering, there was a couple new articles that came up, a few reviews from some folks. Amanda had one, uh, I'm look at, look at, look at, look at Johnny, look at Johnny come lately. Hey, how's Blake. it going guys? Hey, hey how are you doing? I'm all right. My power's been out for the past two hours or so, but I just came on about five or 10 minutes ago. Well, do you <laughs> want to, uh, what? Why don't you like? I was just about to end it because I, I okay. ran out of stuff to talk about. But why don't you bring up the splintering? Let's talk about some splintering. All real right, quick. sure. Yeah, great. Um, there it goes. Shameless self promotion. Jump in right at the last minute. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, Let's I see. mean, I, I I like staying on for two hours on Sundays, so um, I, I want some more stuff to talk about. And I, I actually haven't had a chance to 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 look at the splintering this week, so um, okay. I, I'd like to see what you guys were talking about. Well, yeah, we can do that briefly. Hi, hi everyone in the chat. I haven't got a chance to see everyone in here, so uh, let's bring that up. Yeah, but there's uh, reviews left and right now. It used to just be me, and then it was Blake and I together, and now we got Amanda doing reviews. We got huh. Ryan doing reviews. Like, lots of folks are, are bringing in, and they're following the same format, so it's kind of cool. Huh, cool. Yeah. All right, so let's see if we that pops up. Yeah, there we go. All right, so, yeah, this week... What do we do this week? So yeah, we had Sovereign Wolf. Now, George, you reviewed this with uh, Leroy on his channel. I did, right? but not on yeah. the not on the splintering. Right. So this, but this review is uh, Brian's, also known as Dojo Kun Comics. Right. Um, mm-hmm. He wrote up this review of Sovereign Wolf Force, and he seemed to rather like it. What were your thoughts on it? Uh, me personally. Yeah. 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 I I looked at his grades, and my grades were the same, just in different categories. Like he gave okay. the he gave the book content and quality an A. I gave it a B minus. He gave the stretch goals a B minus. I gave them an A. <laughs> so ah, okay. we we were switched. 
But uh, okay. Leroy and I have a review on it. You can want to check it out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I haven't got a chance to watch that yet. Is there uh, is there uh, is there is there a review for the Silent Night and Toy Campaign yet? I did an I, unboxing video of it, but I didn't do a review of it. So that, I don't know that, how to review a toy. Like I don't know. Like I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's kind of where I, I'm at. <laughs> like I I've seen you talk about them, Patrick, and I feel dumb because I don't. I don't see the things that you see. Like even earlier, you were like, "You're going to recognize this guy's pants," and I'm like, "I'm not going to recognize that guy's pants." Like I don't know what you're seeing. Like I can't visualize toys like you do. You have a brain. <laughs> you have a brain for it. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone in the chat that's good at reviewing toys, let me know. We'll we'll uh, work that out. Get you signed up, and we can get a tour review up. I did uh, read the book. I did read Silent Friday. Mm-hmm. I suppose I could review that. No um, spelling also, errors. I say yes. <laughs> I say red. I read the book. Um, I observed it. I viewed it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he gave uh, packaging. Of course, everyone's seen, I think a lot of people have seen these books as they've mm-hmm. been hitting people's mailboxes and the awesome box that they come in. Um, so yeah, that's a really, really sleek package. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Canuck says he'll do a review and give you an A-plus Patrick for 500 bucks. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I think I, I think I could I, I could at least get an A minus on my own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't even get a cut of that. <laughs> and yeah, and then stretch goals and bonuses B minus. So let's see. The sticker print. What else? Cover Mine came upgrade. packed yeah. with stuff. There was like a rolled poster. There was five yeah. trading cards. There was like a bonus comic that I didn't expect. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was all kinds of stuff in there. Well, if you feel like you have an opinion that is remarkably different than this one, you are free to you are free to write it up, and we in will the future we should a, do that together we'll add it as a second opinion. Um, we should do that together sometime when we both yeah, get the yeah, same book. We could and, do that sort of thing. And, and Dino is saying that we got to thirty four k, and I, I trust him; he's a good man. Um, if that's the case, thank thank you, whoever uh, pushed us over. I appreciate that so much. It, it, it you know it, like it seems like we're just making about a grand like a week now with Ultra Star, which is good because we're going to keep it up for another month and a half or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think we're going to be able to get to that fifty thousand dollar mark, especially next week when I do some art drops. Like there's going to be some serious art drops coming next week, so um, keep a lookout for that. But again, thank you everyone and and Nito, thanks thanks for bringing it up. Now, that's the next stretch goal, I don't recall, is it th- at 35,000 or 40,000? 40, 40. Okay, so we still got way to go to, to get there. Okay. And it's going to be it's going to be a Kenneth Brokerford poster, but it's going to be a big one. It's not going to be the 11 by 17 ones that I sent out last time. It's going to be a, a big one. Oh, like 24 by 36 folded? Yeah. I have a few of those. They used to do those a lot like as, as freebies years years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they came with magazines and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wizard Magazine yeah. used to have them. I used to like that 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 Wizard uh, poster pack that would come. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was like double sided. You should show Patrick your your, your title bar up on top. Um, up Blake. here. Yeah. Notice notice the uh, Johnny Phantasm to the right in the middle. Yeah. So making sure you know it's on there. That's all. <laughs> drawn drawn by Michael Golden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't want, to, don't want him to miss it. Uh, but yeah, this review, uh, Perfect 10, this one was written by Amanda, Amanda B, who's uh, been a fan lurking around in a lot of people's chats and a lot of people's uh, uh, streams and things for a while. So happy to have her on. This is yeah. her second review uh, for us. But uh, Perfect 10, issue two. George, did you get this book? I didn't I get did this not. book. Okay, I, did I didn't not. either. It's one of those ones that uh, I hear a lot of good things about, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. But no, I like uh, that you're getting different folks that have back different things on there. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Can, you, can, can you leave it on the cover there for a second? Yeah, this year down no. there. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Right on. Looks cool. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever, I've heard of this book before. I mean, I uh, like one day maybe maybe we'll do this next week. Um, actually, uh. Well, we'll see. I, I I sent a link to Eric Canetti uh, mm-hmm. uh, to come in. Uh, he was supposed to come in a couple of weeks ago, but I, I I forgot I was doing that convention. And then last week I was I, I was uh, in Orlando. Um, I sent him the link to come in today, but maybe he might be coming in next week. But 
I like to have a day where just you and George just talk to me like I'm just like a like like a uh, like a retard, and just <laughs> I'm there. Just just, just done, <laughs> George, done. George is already there. <laughs> He's like done. Yeah. <laughs> no, but just just because like I, I don't have time. I know that sounds funny, and this might be surprising to a lot of people. No, I know like E can do it, and some people can, that, that are invested in the online thing can do it. But I don't know that many campaigns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like yeah, like it's a lot. I, I'm always surprised to see some that I haven't heard of too. And it's like, well, this already raised like twenty four thousand dollars or something, and I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Very strange. I, yeah, I mean, have you guys seen that that damaged dames book? Uh, Dame mm. gangs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I wrote a post on it earlier this uh, late last week on Friday, I think. I mean, that so, shit is fucking hot, man. Yeah, and it came out of nowhere too. I don't know oh, where that. I mean, came from. dude, like, holy shit! Like that thing just like hit me, like like just like two big knockers right in the face. Uh, um, yes, and that's gonna, exactly I'm, what they're going for. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna bring that campaign up for when you're done talking about okay. this, because I mean, n- not even as a plug, just like at just the amazement of the originality of it. That is kind of just like kind yeah, of yeah. Like, it's a fun idea. It is a see. fun idea. So yeah, but this is definitely a good re- uh, review again by Amanda B. Uh, uh-huh. I give. I hope everyone gets a chance to check it out. She did like the book um, overall. But you could check out all the all of her full thoughts on it. You know, looking at A's, A minuses. Now she got um, a digital version of it, mm-hmm. so she didn't talk about the packaging and shipping. I told her that if she wanted to, she didn't have to write in this particular format. If she wants to just do a standard review, so oh, I didn't realize we could do that. So maybe if, if this happens next time, that's so a yeah, good overall, drawing right there. Yeah, overall grade A minus. I like the that's good thigh gap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That little magic keyhole down there. Jeez. That's what I like to call it, yeah. Man, oh man. <laughs> uh, but if you want to go ahead and bring that up, we can do that. I'm trying to think of what else we had. I mean, I have a the post on it here, so I can pull it up real quickly. Um, if you just want to take a look at it. George, you yeah. had your Power Records thing post. Yeah, uh, probably too this old. Week. Yeah, last week, but we haven't talked about it. But if you want Probably to too old it. for Patrick to remember... Okay. But there was a time, Patrick, when they had comics with records in them. And uh, I had comics with cassette tapes. Yeah, I had that too. But there was a time when there was records in them. And uh, I did a little article about that, just talking about the good old days. I, I, well, I don't remember it like, you know, like being a teenager. But I mean, I remember seeing them. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, what's his name? Lil Letty Pisker did a. <laughs> Uh, in in the hip hop family. Oh, the tree. flexi disc. That's different. That's different. It's different. Yeah, like, I'm talking about like there was legit 45s, like seven inch records, in the back of the book. His was like a little tiny flexi disc. I've yeah, seen yeah, that yeah. before. Like, mm-hmm. remember that comic book Critters from Fanographics? They did that too. There, are a, a few people did flexi discs. Did you just like, it was like it embedded? Out? Yeah, it was yeah, embedded yeah. in there. You just yeah, you cut it out and traced around it and slide slid around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but here's some images of Dame Gang. If you still have the, uh... yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so I mean, just some things that I wanna I, I wanna point out is just like, uh, just how absurd it is, you know? Just these these giant women, you know? Like yeah. really, really, you know, it, it, it's so ironic in this time now because you know talking about women all the time and empowering women and 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 the and the type of uh, things that we do do for them in, in in real life, it's like how 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 they kind of like in stories like in in you know Force Awakens, you know like her you know um, Ray's character is not really like empowering, you know. I mean, when you look at these these gals, it's like sexy and just like so much power. It's like just the way that they're drawn. It's, yeah. it's it's crazy. It's just like the amount of energy that's in it. It's uh immediately 
it's like you're totally telling like the viewer something here about mm-hmm. these gals and and also uh, like like something else that i like about it it kind of reminds me of like robert crumb a lot like i think robert crumb oh yeah the big thighs he would always like draw himself on the back of like these giant women carrying him around yeah but i mean the storytelling is so good uh is there is there more down no this is on my page um and this has all of the images i think that were okay okay well, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, but that's if you go to their campaign page if you go to the campaign page you can uh check out a link that will take you to i think a 27 page preview so like the first 27 pages of the book are done and online to read for free Damn. so if you're looking at this and you're like that looks interesting i'd like to know maybe a little bit more before i back it you can check out online you know downloadable pdf or just read it in your um you know, whatever browser you use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no, first no. 27 pages, which I've not done yet. Um, but I did pull, I think, one, this this image in the top center I pulled from that. So, but yeah, the story seems really fun. Um, basically, the the girl, there are some women who are affected by something that's kind of like reverse dwarfism. Um, and so they're just, they grow to be giant. And they call them like giantesses or something. Um, and so, yeah, well, that, so that randomly like, around the world, there's all these... That sounds very familiar to a. It's like an actual disease. Like Andre the Giant had it, mm-hmm. uh, and um, there's like a surgery that you can get that like stops a certain gland or some shit like that. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but but Big Show. Are you, do you know who the Big Show is in wrestling? Uh, yeah, wrestler. I know the name. I'm not too familiar with. Well, 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 he actually went and got the got the operation, so he, he was able to stop the growing, you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that you know you kind of turning it into a, a thing like this. But yeah, I mean, you can check out our write up on the book here, or if you want to go straight to their campaign, do you want to go ahead and pull up the campaign so you can look at it? No, I think you did, okay. I think you I think you did it justice. Yeah. So yeah. you can find it, you know, we do have links. And, to the campaign and, and such, here. A, such a cool name too, the Dame Gang. Yeah, I, I think that's how you say it. Uh, yeah, you said something like damaging or something like that. And I was like, I don't know, maybe. No, I haven't no, no. heard anyone say it any other way, really. Dame Gang sounds like, Dame well, gang. I mean, it should be Dame Gang if it's not. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, other comic stuff, we can talk about Black Bishop, which uh, I think I backed that one earlier this week. Um, oh, and then, of course, Ethan's Cyber yeah, Frog on, toy. Click on Which the... Click on the action figure for a minute. Okay. So again, everyone, this is uh, you know, this is Blake's site, the splintering mm-hmm. uh, that he, that he does with folks like George and Amanda. Uh, and uh, this is his little review of Ethan's. Well, it's like, yeah, it's a preview of uh the project, right? Uh-huh. So it's just showing off what the images that he showed off. We have a link to the sign up page. Which one do you like better on the screen of those two figures, Patrick? Uh, you're a, you're okay. a connoisseur. Oh, I, I definitely like the one on the right. I like I like the dude with the the tattoos on the side. Mm. Okay. How about you, Blake? I like the one on the left, with the exception of the knee pads. Yeah. I like the knee pads on the right, but I like the color pattern on the left. And I think I like the head shape on the left too. Hmm. I didn't even notice the, all that. You guys are seeing all kinds of. All I, I noticed I, was the colors. <laughs> like, yeah, one was, I think one was yellow, one was silver. Yeah. One, I think they will come with different heads um, because the proportions of his face have changed a little bit. You can see like that ridge in the center of his head on the right, and it's not really there. It's not pronounced as much on the left. So I don't think classic Cyberfrog has that ridge, and he also has those more pronounced eyes. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't particularly love the square knee ca- knee pads. Those just look a little awkward. But otherwise, I like that one on the left a little bit better. I don't know which one. I wonder which one will sell better. Uh, I think they, they will sell the same. Just knowing what I know about like the difference with the Johnny figures, mm-hmm. like it, you know, like I I thought for sure that the black one was going to outsell all of them, and they were all pretty much even. You know, even the glow and dark one. Uh, so, like, some of the things that I like about this guy is I like his ab crunch. I mentioned this a little bit before. There's, like, certain ways that action figures that are, like, six inches and mm-hmm. or seven inches, like, they have ab crunches. And mm-hmm. you can do, like, a big round torso that's kind of, like, around, like, a ball. That's, like, the chest part. 
Um, and that looks okay, although it looks kind of like a little a little bit dismembering. I, I like when the ab crunches are like this because it kind of goes in the shapes of the abs. Um, I'm interested how the waist swivels. Like, does it swivel below the green belt? Uh, I imagine and, it has to, looking at the way it's designed. And then, but, and then yeah. uh, also, I'm interested on how those shoulders move. Like, uh, it, mm. like, 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 for example, like if this is a Black Series uh, le uh, Legends or a uh, JJ Classified, there's movement after the shoulder and the deltoid area. I don't see any type of kinks. Now I see an elbow kink. Uh, and I see some, something able to move at the wrist, but I'm not sure if there's another thing that moves that's like right above the bicep. Yeah, I like, don't. I, it does I don't not know. look like there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to, I have to check that out. Now it looks on the left thigh that there is a thigh swivel, which is good. Um, I, I, I can't see what the knees look like, so I don't know what's happening there. Um, no, I, and, and and something else I'm concerned about is I don't see a ankle rocker. Go back up. Uh, well, I was just looking to see if I had any other pictures of it, so maybe get a different <laughs> view of it. I don't see an ankle rocker, so mm -hmm. it's like if you spread his legs out, uh, he's just he might just stand like a stiff uh, transformer, old school transformer. Now, an ankle rocker is like a ball and socket type joint. Is that what that would look like? It's like if if you spread his legs apart, like and put him in a pose, mm -hmm. you can turn the ankle so that feet will be flat. Okay. You know what I'm saying, and and it looks like he has an up and down motion, but I don't see other uh, other joints or anything like that. So uh, I'm just kind of curious about that. I mean, I like, and it's like it's not like I sit around and I play with them like a whole lot either. You know, it's like I get them in like in a, in a, in a position, and they pretty much stay in that position. You know. But but the ankle rockers are nice because you can kind of have them in like a Spider Man stretch out type of pose. Um, that's a, that's just something that I'm worried about. But uh, you know, like that Salem Android thing that I got yesterday, I did a review of that. If if anyone oh, okay. hasn't seen it, go. I did an unboxing late last night. Um, but uh, you know, it, it looks super sweet. You know, I mean, it's it, it's a toy, but I mean, really, what it is, it's just like a little tiny statue. Um, but it's not tiny at all. It's heavy as shit. Um, and <laughs> the tail is fun because the tail moves around a lot. Yeah. Uh, but the overall quality is like A++. Like it's super, super sharp. I mean, and even the packaging, the packaging has like a diorama thing that's in it. Mm -hmm. And then the like the the way the, 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 the figure is placed in there, it's not placed in there like it would be like a, uh, like, a like a Hasbro action figure where they just kind of just throw them in there and do like the plastic ties real quick with a machine boom boom you know it's like they're they're like hand tied in there like uh four horsemen style packaging so he's kind of posed in there right so he looks real cool and yeah yeah, yeah he's posed in there and he's like sturdy as fuck nice but uh anyway so yeah th that that's just my 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 a couple of comments i have about this like i don't think the fingers move that's why they what that's why he comes with so many different hands which is fine yeah um yeah i'd and, be afraid those fingers would break anyway i'm not and, sure how and I, I, be. I like the idea or or i think maybe the concept of being able to uh, add a large arm to him, like where all his mecha stuff is like kind of coming out of him and that hose, you know how that one scene where his okay. arm, like Ethan said something about there's a version or there's a sculpt of like the giant arm, like with like a, as like a big gun with hoses and stuff. I'd like, I'd like to see something like that um, as well. Yeah. Uh, but, but I, you know, like, I, I think Ethan should do something where he puts this guy next to like a very modern uh, legends or like a Todd McFarlane DC. Uh, cause, cause I think it, like we can get an idea more, more so the height of it and also just like how it compares. George is like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just talk about seeing, yeah, the different scale against other popular figures, George. So you got to put him next to a, you know, something about the same size, see quality-wise, and see how he stacks up or against those other things. 
Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, really, like to be honest, like Ethan should send them to me, and I'll do a, I'll do a video on them. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> and this is what it looks like gets to make. It's a print. You would you would no, like dude, a like, minute I, video, <laughs> just like I, putting it next to stuff. I did. Well, here, here, <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna bring up something, and I'm sure everyone saw this already. No, leave this up. Don't take okay. this down. Leave okay. this up. Uh, but I'm just gonna bring up something real quick. Um, I I. Uh, I, I I I did a short video last night, um, and I was just comparing uh, the Salamandroid to other uh, action figures. George, I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> He's like, Ugh. if it makes you feel any better, George, I missed the whole first ninety minutes. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> um, but this is a, a a picture I posted this up on on on, yeah. the, on the Twitter. <clears throat> but you know, I was just comparing Salamandroid, and you know, also getting a little, a little bit of a rub to to Johnny Phantasm and, and some henchmen back there. But but just comparing the quality of indie indie toys to mainstream toys. Who are the toys next to the henchmen to the right of the henchmen? The, that's from Five, Five Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. Yeah. Those are two Funko toys. Okay. And what about the ones directly behind? It looks like a purple dinosaur of some sort. That's that's a T Rex Megatron from Beast Wars. Okay. Yeah. So it's a Transformer. Now, you, now yeah. you don't like that figure, or you don't like that character, the dinosaur version of Megatron, huh? I don't like the the, the Beast Wars cartoon, but I think oh, okay. the, I think the toy is beyond beautiful. It's like he turns okay. into a T Rex. But the reason why I put him in there is because you can see his mouth. Kind of yeah. and, and compare it to Salamandra's mouth a little bit. Okay. Who, yeah. Who wins in a fight, Cyber Frog or Johnny Phantasm? Uh, Cyber Frog or Johnny Phantasm? I don't know. I think I think they're pretty pretty even match. I mean, that's a good idea because it's like Cyber Frog is kind of like cyborg in a sense, you know. He's except for he's like a robot. Where whereby like Johnny is more along the lines of like. Scarlet Witch, but like a Beetlejuice type type of version of her, you know. So I don't know. I mean, like Johnny can actually change reality. I think, which uh, is in uh, he, like it, like he benefits from. But uh, I think Cyber Frog would, would be actually like faster than Johnny by far. So um, yeah, but but so uh, also I mean, and there we got uh, Cara Dune as well. Next to mm -hmm. Sound Android, you know, that's kind of a little bit of a, a little nod there. Yeah, and um, obligatory Optimus Prime, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and and the things that we're looking at, George, just so mm -hmm. you're wondering, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at the blue and Skeletor, and then the blue on Sound Android. Mm -hmm. See how sharp that looks, and looking at the blue on Optimus Prime, and then the blue on Sound Android. Mm -hmm. Comparing the dark blue in his forearms on those jewels to uh, Lino. Uh, so I mean, so that's the kind of things like like that we're comparing now with the Johnny, the Johnny and the henchmen. I put the the Hasbro um, uh, My Little Pony. That's, that's my wife's. Just just <laughs> just to compare the green. Yeah. Like just comparing. The I didn't green. even notice that. <laughs> just comparing the green to the henchmen shirts. It's his wife's, you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, and when I was a, when I was a kid, I based all of my toy buying on who had the coolest accessories. That was it. Oh yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's not. That sounds like George. <laughs> yeah. I I would think it would be who had the best box with the most ties and things in it. No. It in well. No. It, I remember when I got my GI <laughs> Joes, I got Snake Eyes and I got Storm Shadow because they had the coolest oh, accessories, the swords and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like like you know there was like a, a backpack for Storm Shadow that had all these arrows you couldn't remove them, but like I remember it opened. You could put his like nunchucks in there. He had a bow. He had mm -hmm. all these like knives and swords. Like there was so much stuff that came with them. Um, and then it, it, the, the, there's something that I wanted to, to kind of highlight, not and not to throw any shade, but oh. um, you know that Todd McFarlane Batman, I threw him in there, uh, just kind of in the back, and I and I I really need to do a side by side comparison because, like, without a doubt, like Ethan's looks much better. Now mm -hmm. I know I know Ethan's is more of a statue, so it's a little bit different. But I mean, the plastic that is even done on that Batman is just no bueno. 
Like I, I had high hopes for that Batman, and I, I'm kind of like really let down by it. Like I, no. I like I was gonna do a whole McFarlane Batman theme where I was gonna get Robin, which I did get Robin, but I was gonna get uh, Azrael. I got Azrael, but I was gonna get I was gonna get other Nightwing. Now I don't think I'm gonna get Nightwing. I think I, I might be done, you know, because I was like this Batman was kind of disappointing. Um, but, but I, 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 you know, I wanted to do a little side by side comparison of those and it's hard to tell cause he's in the back, but it's like, he does not look as good as not just Salamandroid, but just like any of these figures. What's in his hand. He has like a, like a gold bat batarang. It's kind of like sideways. So it looks like he's holding like, like a cigar, a sandwich, a sandwich, a cigar yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just fun doing this and. This was me just really totally like geeking out last night, just taking these photos. Uh, but you know, I like like the point of, like that I was just getting at with all this um, is just comparing indie toys to mm -hmm. mainstream toys, you know, and just uh, it's like we can do it, you know, totally. Um, real quick, uh, Sam Spade, this is an interesting subject matter talking about Sergeant Slaughter. Um, I'm actually going to be doing black side. Come here. Hold on. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a, a short video, uh, um, here shortly about a, um, about the new Sergeant Slaughter figure that's coming out. Uh, like I've been doing some recent toy videos. If you, you know, if anyone hasn't seen them, like go, go check them out. Some of them are fun. Some of them are funny. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be doing a Sergeant Slaughter video soon. Um, but but anywho, uh, I'm gonna call it a day, okay. and uh, I'm gonna go do some work. Um, but George, thanks for coming by. Of course. Um, oh, something. If I could plug one more thing, if y'all didn't talk about it, um, George sent me a care package recently, and I posted my unboxing video of George's care package. It's oh, okay. On, it's on the it's on the YouTube channel. I'll write something up on the splintering dot com, which will basically what? just clone that channel. Um, because I thought it'd be funny for everyone to see kind of ha what his gold standard for packaging a book and sending it is. Uh, so I do open it up fully, and you get a chance to see uh, how much care and uh, attention to detail he put into shipping something uh, that is comic book size. <laughs> Yeah, George it does put a lot of care in something. Mm -hmm. It's like you can you, you you can ship that thing off to 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 NASA. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. Yeah, and George actually did mention that already earlier. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But well, um. Don't be me. Uh. Again, George, thanks for coming by. Of course, Blake, thanks for coming mm -hmm. by, and of course, people watching. Um, I appreciate you so much, and thanks for getting us over to three four thousand dollars onward and upward. I'm going to be doing an art drop next week, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you're watching this now, if you're watching it later, I appreciate you guys. Uh, just going to play the trailer, jam out to some music on the way out. I like the song, so that's one of the reasons why I like playing it. But um, I hope everyone has a good Sunday, and I'll see everyone later.